there, Michelle Raisobi here. I am coming to you to offer a teen yoga class for ages 9 through 12 or in or around there. So most of these sauna that we'll be doing will be appropriate for these age groups. Uh, today's theme we'll be talking about uh, harnessing our emotions for test taking and seeing if we can't pick up a few tips on the mat to help us along the way with that. So to begin, let's just start off in a mountain pose. And we wanna talk about chopping our feet down as we take this mountain, a soft, easy breath, some easy shoulder rolls. As we take this mountain, let's talk about taking responsibility for our own health and how and why we could do that. And you know, sometimes we are in an environment where maybe our family uh, doesn't eat what would be considered the healthiest or have that much of an active lifestyle. Uh, perhaps there's, you know, quite a bit of a um, of sedentary lifestyle and maybe not the best food stuff choices. And so it's easy for us to say that, well, I can't really eat healthy because, you know, my family blank whatever that is but you know I encourage you to find creative ways to try and introduce healthy living into your life one way or another even if it's each day just doing just one thing mindfully that moves towards health so whether that be you know through movement or through stress management or through the foodstuffs we eat when we start to partner these ideas with how we do on exams, for example, it can go a really long way on exam day to eat a nice, um, maybe whole grain meal, something substantial so that you're not going into the exam, you know, hungry or distracted from hunger. You might do a, a short vinyasa flow or a grounding series prior to said exam, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, so taking responsibility about what we can do to live our healthiest life is one of the best ways to become empowered and yoga is really about that. You know, yoga, when we, when we think of like yogis, oftentimes folks might say, oh, you know, yogis are passive and so on. And, you know, I don't know that that's true. I, I think that, that yogis are warriors and they're, and they're fighters and, and, and that's where we get like the warrior series. And so if you think along these lines, huh, I, I, would, I would just invite you as you take your mat today that there may be some postures that don't work for you and there may be some postures that maybe uh, just go towards the edges of what your limits are. Stop before that, keep, your, keep yourself within a healthy space. Um, but always try and give yourself permission to play around with these ideas and see if you can not express and explore an invitational kind of practice. So for, for starters, we're gonna do a variation of joy breath. So let's just float our feet forward and back. Let's allow our arms to sway and our shoulders to relax. We just take a soft, easy breath in through the nose and then out. Let's drop the fingertips, the gaze towards the hands. Let's bring those arms up and Exhales, we hands. And again, inhale up. Exhales, we hinge. One more time that way. Inhaling up. And exhales, we hinge. Hopefully that gives you a chance just to release any maybe uh, nervous energy that you're holding on to. Give it, just give us a chance just to breathe it out and move through our bodies and express it out. So let's add a layer. So inhaling up and center and out. And maybe without looking, can you imagine as though your arms are in alignment with your fingertips rather than back or forward? Can you imagine, can you feel your way through this? Just a mindful activity, right? Because this is yoga. Yoga is just mindfully moving with intention. So let's bring those arms forward and up and exhale. And up and open and together. Let's flow it and exhale and up and out and up 
and exhale. Beautiful. Nice big shoulder roll. So, you know, we talked a little bit about healthy living and, you know, whether or not you are or are not in an environment that's already set up for healthy living, one might be more challenging than the next. Uh, and, you know, the question might be, how can you tell if someone is healthy, right? Is it the size they wear, or the clothes they pick out? And, you know, honestly, I, I like to gauge my personal health by my energy level. So if I'm not taking care of myself and I'm eating quite a bit of fast food and I'm not getting enough sleep and I'm feeling stressed and I'm not finding yoga or time for yoga or meditation, it tends to pop up in my energy level. So with that, I invite you to consider that find a gauge, some sort of gauge, and just keep a mindful eye on what that looks like, okay? So you can see if someone's living healthy, but it might look different from this person to that person, but there is usually some identifying markers. You know, some might express physically, others might express emotionally, others might express, you know, in another way, energetic levels or whatever it happens to be. But what's important is that we find what it is for us as individuals and we keep an eye on that we take steps to move towards this healthy living. So to start off, we're going to begin in mountain and we're just going to drop our fingertips down with our gaze towards the floor, float the heels, inhaling up. Let's let the gaze follow the hands, inhaling up, exhaling down. This time, inhaling up. Exhaling, bringing it to a forward fold. Let's drop those fingertips down. Just invite that belly towards the thighs. Coming down as far as it feels good for you to go. Not forcing anything. Really what we want to do is keep the knees above the ankles here. Inhale halfway up. Exhale down. Inhale halfway up. And this time we're just gonna walk it out into a plank. So let's come into a plank. And by all means, you can have your knees up or down, whatever works for you. Uh, I like plank, I find it to be an empowering posture, so I, I kinda have my knees up, but you can have your knees down, really, or maybe one up and then the other to me, up to you. Uh, what I really care about though is that the shoulders are over the wrists and that the elbows are nice and soft. So if we can have that, take a soft, easy breath in your plank. Maybe drop those knees down. Maybe bite the toenails to the mat and slowly begin to shut around the down. Easing your way into a cobra or a sphinx or an upward facing dog. Upward facing dog, our knees are off the mat, but that's not necessary. You can find whatever variation works for you. And let's flip those feet and bring the hips back, finding that downward facing dog. This inhale and exhale right here. Can we pedal out the heels and feel the lengthening up through the body? Soft, easy breaths. And there's no right or wrong. You know, sometimes folks feel like, how wide can this stance be? But really, I just, uh, I just invite you to send the weight back towards your feet and away from your arms and see what happens there. And if we open up our shoulders, send the shoulders away from the ears, creating some space, maybe pedaling out those heels, finding some space for some lengthening there. And this is such a great one to lengthen those hamstrings. So if you're a runner or an athlete, this is a, a wonderful posture for you. I find downward facing talk to be very grounded myself. So you can step, jump forward, or you can walk yourself back. However you want to do it, find yourself in a forward fold. Inhale and exhale with ease. Can we come halfway up? Can we bend at the knees and invite the belly towards the thigh and slowly begin to ragdoll up? Nice and slow, nice and slow. Inhaling those arms overhead once again, shoulders away from the ears, inviting hands together. Beautifully done. Let's just shake that out a little bit. Take a nice soft inhale and an exhale. So for today's practice, we're largely going to focus on standing postures. 
and I'll talk about them uh, individually in a Hatha approach. You know, different uh, teachers have different styles, so a Hatha approach is commonly known as one where we take a little bit more time in between postures. A vinyasa flow tends to imply that it is um, matching the breath. So we inhale into a movement, we exhale into a movement, and so on. There aren't as many breaks in between. And of course, there's some variations of these terms, but as you see them on a class schedule, I think it's helpful to have some idea. So I'll be approaching more from the Hatha angle than the Vinyasa flow angle, just so you know today. So coming from the other side, starting in mountain, taking a nice, soft, easy, deep breath. I'm gonna bring those arms up overhead, just as I did before. And come on, swan dive down. You can bend the knees if you'd like, returning to that downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. Send those heels back. Can okay, maybe even walk the toes in closer. Notice that the heels can go back a little further when you can do that. Invite the belly towards the side, thighs. Invite the weight back towards you. Inhale and exhale. We're gonna jump or step forward into our forward fold. And we're gonna slowly begin to ragdoll up into a mountain pose. Kind of picking up there, just walking it out. Inhale and exhale. Feel the head turn from side to side. Open up the rib cage, open up the chest. So now coming to the side of your mat, let's come into a star pose. So wherever your feet want to go, my feet want to tend to want to come forward, uh, but yours might want to come out or another way. And I invite you to take whatever practice uh, works for you there. All right, so from our open legs, we're gonna bring our arms overhead, finding a star pose. Inhale here. And we're gonna send one hand out to the side to reach, and then drop that hand, opening up the chest, finding a triangle pose. And if you had a block, you could use a block here. We're not far away from extended side angle, so if we wanted to bend the knee here, that's where that could happen. You know, some folks will try so hard to reach the ground in triangle pose. And in so doing, you see what's happened. The front area has collapsed. The shoulders are now no longer over the hips as they were before. So let's just take a moment here. Maybe even gaze to the sky if that feels good for you. Be mindful if you have any neck discomfort or anything along those lines. Inhale up. And to the other side. And you might find that you take a wider stance or maybe a not wider stance. And back to star. Let's bend this knee and see if we can find a warrior too. So for me, I find it works best to have some space uh, with this back foot at a 45 degree angle, depending on your lineage there. You might find the heel is in line with the instep of the back foot and you might find that a wider stance works better for you. And I want you to, to do what feels right for you. Feel your arms come forward, your gaze comes forward, find that warrior two. Can we track that knee over the ankle? Beautiful. And can we invite that knee to aim towards the second and third toe, if that feels right for you? Inhale and exhale. Up into star, over to the other side. Let's find that warrior two right into that other side. Drop into that, nice strong arms. Gaze comes forward over the fingertips. And arms reach up, back into star. Let's step together and find that mountain one more time. How does your body feel there? Let's just walk it out. So our next posture for today is going to be warrior one. So coming at the back of our mat, sending our shoulders back. Let's step our right foot forward first. Dealer's choice there, knees come forward. What I'm really looking for though is the hips to be square under the shoulders as best as your body allows them to be. So since our bodies aren't square and rectangular and 90 degree angles, just try to imagine what that idea might look like. What we're trying not to do is open up the hips as we did in our warrior two, but rather have them forward. And even if that means taking a more narrow stance to come into that warrior one with those fingertips towards the sky. And the knee is over that ankle. Take a soft, easy breath. How does your low back feel? That's what I want you to do. 
Pay attention to that step together. Take a nice, big, easy shoulder rolls. Let's just shake that off for a minute, shall we? And then we'll come on into the other side. So starting the back of the mat. You know, I like to come to the back of the mat <clears throat> sometimes for classes, is that it gives us a chance to reset. So it's one approach. Nice big shoulder rolls. Inhale, exhale. Left foot says steps forward. Right spins back. Find your width there. For me, I do like the heel in line with the end step of the back foot or so. The arms nice and strong overhead. Can we set our shoulders back and down? It is said that a warrior protected the town from a slain dragon and held his head over, over arms this way between his hands to show the town that they were safe and the dragon was slain. Inhale and exhale. Take a look at your knee. Where's it at? What's it doing with the second and third toe? Can you explore around so that feels good? Make sure there's no pressure on your knee. Inhale and exhale and step it forward. Let's just walk that out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to break into our partner poses a little bit and tree poses next. So let's try it ourselves first and then we'll work together with this. So Starting with the heel right on the ankle, right? And you might find that using a bar is a little easier for you, right? That's what's nice about a partner too, is uh, heels right on the ankle. Maybe the foot is on the inside of the calf. It's not on the knee though. Perhaps you pick it up and bring it to the inner thigh. Again, not on the knee, holding on to that bar, bringing the arms overhead, or maybe even allowing your tree to sway. And this is where a friend can come in handy. So let's all grab a friend. Um, if it works better for you to use a bar or a countertop or something along those lines. The idea behind the partner yoga is to know that you're supported and you're not on this journey all by yourself and alone. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate with the bar and we'll walk through that process. So the heel comes to the ankle, the shoulders come back and down, soft, easy breath. You know, maybe this leg has as much flexibility as the other leg, all depending on the on the flexibility of the hips there, and maybe it doesn't. So for here, I'm, I'm happy here with the foot on, on the side there. That feels good. But I'm finding that base of support of my standing leg, and maybe in this time, bringing my hands together, taking a soft, easy breath, and finding that focus. All right, so extending through our partner poses, let's all come to the bar and just face one another and just mirror each other in our mountain. And so the game will be always the bottom half of the body will just stay wherever you want it to be. So whether it's the, the heels on the ankle or higher up or whatever, just not on the knee. But let's see if we can't play about the arms with our partner. So we'll start off here with one hand here and the hand to center. And then maybe hands together. And maybe your partner raises a little. Maybe you hold on to your bar and your partner keeps raising and that's okay. Otherwise, maybe your partner brings their arms overhead. Can you try that? And we can find that swaying tree. And hands together and reaching for that bar. So again, the whole idea behind partner poses is really just to remind you that you're supported and we don't have to do everything all by ourselves, right? Some of us have learned this along the way that that's, that that's the, the way things should be done, right? And I invite you to maybe, maybe consider seeing it another way. So as we move into this next section of our video, we will, begin to work our way down. And I really want you to work your way down in a way that feels good for you and not feel any pressure. But I like to come down in a forward fold and then to a downward facing dog. So that's how I'll be doing it. And you can come along with me or you can find another way for you to come on down. We're gonna end up in table on our hands and knees pose on the mat in a minute. So dropping our 
chin to the chest. Let's reach the arms up overhead just as we did before. Lift the kneecaps, invite the, the thighs to engage. Exhale, forward fold, bringing it down. Invite the hands towards the earth. Exhale, slowly begin to walk it out to downward facing dog. Here we are once again. Remember that tabletop I promised? Here we are. And just as we did in plank, get in the habit of having the shoulders over the wrist with the nice soft elbows, right? And you can choose to have the toenails on the mat or maybe you want to tuck your toes, deciding what feels right for you. Inhaling and exhaling. And let's just come back into a nice rock pose, just resting it up a little bit. And some of you might find your hips come all the way down, and some of you don't, and that's okay. Just send the release through the fingertips into the earth beneath you. Again, the whole theme of this is finding present, releasing stress, and reducing anxiety. Inhale and exhale, beautiful. Let's come on up again. So for this next pose, I'm going to sit on a bolster, and you can do the same, or you can sit on a block or on a folded up blanket, or even if you want to, you can roll up the end of your yoga mat. Uh, it, what this does is it allows the hips to elevate and the knees to fall. So it's just a little more comfortable on the low back. If you have tighter hips like I do, you might find more comfortable in this, or it can be right on the floor, whatever works for you. Inhale and exhale, nice shoulder rolls. So we're gonna play around with a variation of boat. So again, challenging what we can do and just moving that edge a little further outside of always knowing what we can do and what that will look like, but maybe a step further of what if I brought it to the next step? What would that look like for me? So we'll do this challenge pose is going to be boat. So let's invite our back, back, finding alignment between the shoulders and the hips. I've got my hands on the, on the bolster, maybe yours are on the floor. Open up the chest. Can we lift one foot? Exhale, and maybe send it down. Let's lift the other foot, and send it down. Now this time, let's try and lift both feet. Now this is hard. If that lower back starts to round, drop a toe. Because really, we want the low back nice and flat. Maybe our arms come out before us. Maybe our feet come forward when we do, which is a really nice transition to smooth right into a lovely forward fold, keeping those nice knees nice and soft if you did choose to elevate the hips, dropping the fingertips to the toes, inhaling and exhaling. Beautiful. We're gonna bring it all the way back now onto the mat. Drop your bolster right here. I have a little trick I like picked up along the way. Let's take one block on its end and the other sideways. And let's just set our bolster this way. This is a really nice option if you have students you know, for prenatal yoga or if anybody has vertigo or maybe you're just more comfortable not completely lying down on the floor, you can build yourself a ramp right here. Just make sure it's nice and steady. Back block up, forward block sideways. And if you don't have that, then just take whatever, whatever positions work up for you. But what you do want to do is drop your hips to the edge of the bolster and slowly just go ahead and slide it back. So from here, let's allow the shoulders to open and the knees to sway. We're just gonna take a gentle twist. We're gonna drop the knees to one side and the gaze to the other. Maybe even float that arm across the body to do so. And bring it on over to the other side. Beautiful, nicely done. Let that go, we're just gonna wring out any of that stress, let it go. Drop our feet down if that feels good to you. You might find the knees bent and the soles of the feet on the floor works better for you. But let's just move through a brief body scan. 
starting at crown chakra, the top of the head, starting at the top of the head, moving its way down over the forehead, jaw, releasing any tension in the mouth. Maybe if the, the teeth are clenched, let that go. Soften shoulders and arms and elbows and fingertips. Soften the belly and release the back. Let the hips fall open, allow the legs to sway, and the knees to release, the ankles and the toes. Just close your eyes. And going back to our theme, if you find that you're taking an exam, I invite you to just close your eyes and just take a scan of the body and feel that breath move through as you do. Just bring your awareness to presence, moving away from that next thing that happens, that next thought that happens that often can invite anxiety and stress on. Just being present through the act of a body scan. And in this way, as we slowly turn to our side, Learning presence on a body scan can go such a nice way, no matter where you are. Just close your eyes, do a scan, inhale and exhale with the ease through it as it feels good to you. And then, you know, here's my favorite part. I invite you to end today's class with a journaling exercise where, you know, it doesn't have to, be anything really big or vast. You don't need a fancy journal, regular notebook can do. Or if you have a, a nice journal, you know, that's a nice touch. And we're just gonna go ahead and take about 10 minutes or so and just write down what came up for us. And when done, we're gonna just close that and set our pen down and just hold space for our experience in that way. So thank you so much for joining me today. Good luck on your exam. I'm sure you'll do great. And keep in mind, it's not about what your fellow students are doing, whether at a desk or on a mat. It's what you can do in making sure that you're finding presence and joy within the experience. Thanks so much for joining me, Michelle, and I'll see you next time.